time to talk about the 3am edition. Hello fellow book nerds, this is Gabby and today is second part of me recommending you books based on Midnight by Taylor Swift. So we've done the whole Midnight album, the original one, 13 songs, where I tell you a song and tell you a book that I think resonates with that and you should read those books because they're all like really good books that I've read. And now we're doing part two, which is talking about the 3 a.m. edition. So we have seven more songs and last video was quite long and you can find it in the playlist down below. But I think I think I have some great picks for this one. So I am very excited. All right, The Great War. For The Great War, I thought you need a book with a great war. And I thought and thought. And I think for this one, I'm going to recommend you Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. So in Foundry Side, we follow um, Sansia, who's a girl, uh, a thief, and has to survive on her own, has no one, she's a former slave, and then um, kind of gets involved into the world of scribing. And scribing is like giving, writing out certain sigils on objects so that they have certain properties like you could scribe a door so that it never opens unless you have a very specific like key or, or something like that but it's like you know not a normal lock it's it's like a magical lock I feel like not so much in book one but like eventually in like book two which is shortfall the the stakes get really high and we're really starting to like see the consequences of this big war between mystical forces of like uber proportions and I think this one fit well because there's really a cool like a really good romance in this um between Sansia and another girl, girl called Beatrice so it's a sapphic romance and I felt the lyrics kind of you know talked about that so it says my knuckles were bruised like violets sucker punching walls cursed you as I sleep talked spineless in my tomb of silence so I feel like the main character being alone in the beginning with no one like to call family, no one to call friends and she's just always by herself and kind of my hand is the one you reached for all throughout the Great War. I think it's a really great um, description of Sansia and Bernice's relationship. I just think it's so wholesome. It's not super angsty. It's not super like will they, won't they? They just do and they work really well, especially again in book two. It really like uh, crystallizes and I vow not to fight anymore if we survive the Great War and I feel like these characters have to always fight, you know, an uphill battle and they're just waiting for it to not be quite so, so hard. So I think um, that one works well for that. Bigger than the whole sky. I mean, obviously very, 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 very sad and a book about loss um, and what kind of loss might that be? Let's not speculate. I think that this book that I chose really, really talks about grief so much and about loss and it's just a really beautiful story also about saying goodbye and moving on and that book is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akweke Emezi. So in this book we follow um, a woman whose husband passed away in an accident I think. So um, she's been widowed for a couple of years now and kind of lived in this fog of depression and sadness and um, eventually she decides to kind of step out of that and you know try dating again even though she doesn't really feel ready or want to. She just kind of is ready to stop grieving um, and she meets this guy and he seems nice and, and they kind of get along and then he invites her to this private island uh, where his dad lives because um, she's an artist and the dad has like there's like a big art show um, and she meets the dad and there's actually a re relationship there um, and the dad also lost his wife so I feel like both of the characters like this whole story is about grieving and letting go and moving on and also finding solace in new people and I think that was really really it was such a beautiful book and I think that really fits within this song um because like it says the words appear before me in the aftermath salt streams out of my eyes and into my ears every single thing I touch becomes sick with sadness and like you really see the main character like grieving for a long period of time before the book even started where where it's this massive thing happened where the character thought that 
this is the, their person and, and, they, and they pass away and it's like the grief is so encompassing so goodbye 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 you were bigger than the whole sky you were more than just a short time and I've got a lot to pine about I've got a lot to live without and again it's just like moving on from like your the love of your life um passing away and like leaving this gaping hole in you and this book is about healing and about moving on but not forgetting but saying goodbye and like appreciating the time you had together and grieving the time you will never have so I think it's very 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 sad and the book is beautiful sad and I think very complex and I really appreciate that and the song is bloody sad as well Paris uh, so for this one I struggled this was probably the most str I've struggled for the whole thing this and Lavender Haze but I've chosen The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood so in this one we follow um a grad student I think she studied chemistry or something and she somehow gets involved in one of the professors not really her professor but like a professor at the university and they enter like a fake relationship and he's like you know she's sunshine he's a grump and it's kind of like Raylo fanfic inspired which I didn't know at the time as I was reading it but there is a scene where they're in a hotel room which kind of reminded me of this and it's like you know all about falling in love and being happy so I felt like a romance rather than like a sad book or like a fantasy where everything sucks uh, I feel like a romance just did a better job but privacy signed on the door and on my page and on the whole world the romance is not dead if you keep it just yours levitated thought all the messes made I'm so in love that I might stop breathing, drum up on your bedroom ceiling. No, I didn't see the news because we were somewhere else. I just feel like there is like a certain scene. I think it's from this book. I'm like 90% sure. Where they're both in like a hotel room and it's just like kind of like their time. And it's like, you know, this like love bubble where you don't really realize what time it is, what's happening. Is the news? We don't know because we don't care because we're just so in love. So that's the vibes and I'm going with it. High infidelity, I would say, though for this one, I would recommend De Hacienda by Isabel Canas. So in this book, we follow a girl, um, it's like in the 1800s, Mexico, and her father is part of the Mexican independence war and kind of um, sides with people that didn't win so he gets executed and her whole family kind of goes into ruin so as a way of like pulling herself and her mother out of the poverty she decides to marry this man called Rudolfo who's got money um, he's high in the government and he um, has got this beautiful hacienda this house that she would be the donna of weird things start happening pretty quickly I mean it's like inspired by Rebecca and like Mexican gothic and that kind of vibe so that should tell you but um, there's also a handsome priest um, and and things kick off from there. So there's definitely an inf infidelity with a priest. So, you know, it's like high inf infidelity because the, the priest is betraying the higher power. So it's like it, it works on many levels. Some of the like lyrics that made me think of it, it was like storm coming, good husband, bad omen, dragged my feet down the aisle at the house lonely, I'd pay if you just know me, seemed like the right thing at the time. So, you know, her making a decision to like marry this man, mostly because of the money and he seemed fine and she didn't really care for romance or or that he was like part of the government that like killed her dad. Um, she was like, it's good money and there was plenty of bad omens and she you know like dragged her feet down the aisle because she was like, this is the best thing for me and my mom. So seemed like the right thing at the time. The lock broken, that makes me think of, you know, like going places you're not meant to and there's definitely like things happening in the house where she's not really sure what's happening and like kind of trespassing into where she's not meant to go to find the mystery. Rain soaking, there's a scene where she's running through rain, running away in the rain and comes soaking. And then you said I was freeloading, I didn't know you were keeping count. So that's kind of like, again, her marrying for and to an extent for money but also for the security and then the husband not really minding like she's taking his money because that was normal all the time but more like there's certain things you are meant to be certain type of wife you're meant to be and certain things you have to do to earn this money and earn like the the safety and security i'm giving you and then do you really want to know where i was april 29th i mean I'm, i don't remember exactly it was april that the book's taking place but anyway 
do I really have to chart the constellation in his eyes? Do I really have to tell you how he brought me back to life? So again, there's some sweet, sweet priest loving in this one. And um, she definitely came to life with him. Okay, for glitch, I have Iron Widow by Ziran Jai Zhao. We follow Zia Tian, who actually, like in real world, was first and only female emperor. And um, in this book, it's it's kind of like a futuristic sci-fi and there's these like aliens we have to fight and there's these massive like robot like things so we create our own robots these mechas to like fight them and women in the society are meant to be like co-pilots of these giant mechas and that usually kills them because they're like weaker her sister gets murdered so she decides to get revenge that's all i'm gonna say i felt like this book was reluctant allies to lovers and i know it's not exactly what this song is about but I just feel like it kind of works. So we were supposed to be just friends, but replace friends with allies. You don't live in my part of town, but maybe I'll see you on some weekend. Depending what kind of mood or situation I'm in, very casual, where allies will go to help each other survive. But what's in my system? I think there's been a glitch. Five seconds later, I'm fastening myself to you with a stitch. And that I'm not even sorry and I feel like there was a great romance in this one it's actually a frapple so there's a polyamorous relationship in this one um but all of it just feels like resonates I don't know and the system's breaking down a brief interruption a slight malfunction and I feel like you know with like massive robots you're just gonna have some kind of like glitches and malfunctions and and it all works I promise okay would have could have should have is a story about John Mayer, who we hate. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about another Kitty Fiddler song. <laughs> this one, this song, I was like, oh yeah, this is a very sad song. And then I like read the lyrics again, I was like, fuck me, it's bad, dark, Jesus. Um, so I thought, you know, what's better than another dark book, which is called My Dark Vanessa by El Kate Elizabeth Russell. So in this one, we follow a young, wo like a woman, um, who had a relationship with her teacher when she was younger, um, I think she was like 15 or something, and uh, she never saw it as abuse, she saw it as um, consensual because she was in love with him, um, and now it's like 10 or 15 la years later and another student um, accused the teacher of abuse, and it's kind of the main character coming to terms that what happened to her wasn't okay and wasn't her choice, and letting go of some of the ideas that she had of like, what that relationship was all about. I mean, there's so many lyrics that fit. If you would have blinked, then I would have looked away at the first glance. If you tasted poison, you could have spit me out at a first chance. So like, again, like the man who's older knew better, should have stopped this, but kept it going. And if I was a pain, did I splatter on a promising grown man? So again, it's like the focus on the man's future rather than a woman's in situations like this. And if I was a child, it didn't matter if you got to wash your hands. If you never looked my way, I would have stayed on my knees and I damn sure never would have danced with the devil. And now that I'm grown, I'm scared of ghosts, memories feel like weapons and the main character has a lot of like nightmares and trauma responses and she doesn't really realize that's what they are. Um, but Lord, you made me feel important, but then you tried to erase us. How he started preying on her was be basically because she was lonely and didn't have friends and he saw an opportunity to take advantage of someone young and kind of clueless. God rest my soul, I miss who I used to be. The thumb won't close, stained glass window is in my mind. I regret you all the time. I can't let this go, fight with you in my sleep. The wood would have closed. I kept on waiting for a sign. I regret you all the time. Now sad. Okay, so dear reader, for this one, I actually wanted to recommend The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. So in this book, we follow a boy who um, has a weird experience when he's a kid and then as an adult finds a library book, which like depicts and talks about the exact experience he had, but he was like, no one was around, no one saw it. So what's that about? It's about like secret libraries, alternate dimension. It's quite like complicated. Um, but I felt like some of the lyrics really fit because it's like, dear reader, if it feels like a trap, you're already in one. 
the reader get out your map pick somewhere and just run the reader burn all the files desert all your past lives and if you don't recognize yourself that means you did it right and it just feels like you know he finds this book and is a reader therefore but it's kind of a um, messy dangerous situation that he gets himself in and it's more complex than you know just like opening a book i don't know what i was trying to say the reader, the, great, the, the greatest of luxuries is your secrets. There's a lot of secrets. So I wander through these nights. If you read it, you know. I prefer hiding in plain sight, my fourth drink in my hand, these desperate prayers of a cursed man. You wouldn't take my word for it if you knew who was talking, if you knew where I was walking. You would find another guiding light, guiding light, but I shine so bright. I just feel like a lot of the imagery, if you read it, like, this book, it's, it's, it's hard to talk about and it's easy to to spoil I guess because you don't really know that much going into but there's a lot of wandering at night and finding each other and finding your identity and having past lives and like all of that kind of stuff I feel like it just really resonates so I think like it's a really good choice for this song but you let me know so those are all of them I had a lot of fun doing these two videos if you're interested in more Taylor Swift recommendations I've done ever more and I've done read Taylor's version I will also be doing more of these videos whenever new songs albums all the albums re remastered or whatever come out so subscribe follow the playlist and i'll see you next time but if you enjoyed the video if you could comment like and subscribe i really really appreciate it, it really helps me out but that's it for me and i'll see you in my next one bye